Welcome, everyone. We are going to uh, begin with the hymn, O Come All Ye Faithful. We invite you to stand and worship with us. Those of you at home, please sing along. Those of you in the room, hum along. Good morning. So good to see you here today. I'm David Hall, one of the pastors here at Christ Church. It's good also to have our congregation worshiping at home. We're thankful that we can be together even if we are in different places. We are so excited about our very special Christmas Eve candlelight services that are going to be virtual and online. Those services will be, uh, or that service will be live streamed at 3 o'clock. And then you can watch it anytime later if that's more convenient for you. The service will have beautiful music, songs of Christmas, a powerful sermon. And then, of course, we close that service by singing together Silent Night as we light our candles. We want to provide the candles for you. And so if you want to take advantage of that, come by the church at two different, one of two different times for a drive through One will be next Sunday afternoon from 2 o'clock till 4 o'clock. The other one will be the day before Christmas Eve, December 23rd, and it'll be in the evening, 5 to 7 o'clock. Staff members will be outside. There may be a pastor or two there, and we'll greet you, but you just stay in your car. You drive through. We'll give you your candles. If you have children at home, we'll be happy to give you glow sticks for them, and we hope you'll think about a family, a neighbor, a friend, someone that you would like to give candles to so they can celebrate our candlelight service with us safely in their home. Now, we're also planning in-person worship services on Christmas Eve here in the sanctuary. Those will be at 3 o'clock and at 5 o'clock. Pre-registration is absolutely required, and today is the last day to register for those to make sure we can safely seat everyone. Um, I want to make sure you understand what those services are going to be like. I've talked to a couple of people who were a little confused. Uh, in those in-person services, you'll come in, a pastor will greet you, welcome you, and then we will watch together on the screens the services that have already been recorded, our virtual worship services. A pastor will, will also give a Christmas blessing at the end. When we sing Silent Night, 
in the service, we actually won't be singing here. Singing will be taking place on the screen, and we'll, we'll hold up our glow stick or our cell phone light so that we can be part of that. But I want you to be sure that, that you understand there'll be no live uh, singing or music on stage during those services. It will be pre-recorded. If you do plan to attend one of those in-person services, again, please register by the end of the day today. We've got to be careful and make sure we keep you safe and healthy. And speaking of keeping you safe and healthy, we've decided next Sunday, December 20th, the following Sunday, the 27th, and the Sunday after that, January 3rd, we'll have one virtual worship service on Sunday morning online. It'll be at 10 o'clock. We'll have no in-person worship on those three Sundays. If you've been watching lately, the whole state of Tennessee is red, and uh, the county of Hamilton is really having tons of COVID cases, and so we want to be safe. Um, those services uh, on, on the 20th, next Sunday, the 27th, and on January 3rd will be uh, online through live stream and also Facebook Live. Again, 10 o'clock, but like always with all of our services, if 10 o'clock doesn't work for you, you can watch and worship those later in the day or whenever is convenient for you. For those of you who are here in the sanctuary in person, thank you for registering. You did that as you dropped off your contact information as you came in. For those of you worshiping at home, we'd ask that you take out your phone now, open the Christ Church app, and let us know that you're worshiping with us. And do that no matter when you worship. If it's, if it's on Monday, go ahead and register your attendance. We'd like to know that you're watching and worshiping with us. If you have a prayer request or if you'd like a call from one of the pastors, just let us know and we'll follow up. Thank you. On this third Sunday of the Advent season, we light the candle of joy. We can always have a deep sense of joy in our lives because when we receive the gift of Jesus Christ and follow his way, we can be assured that we belong to God. Romans fifteen thirteen speaks of all three of the candles that we have lit so far. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. It is our prayer that as we approach Christmas, each of you will know the joy that only God can give.
Well, hello and welcome to Children's Moment. I'm Mary Beth Hammett, the Children's Ministry Director at Christ, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. It is almost time. It's getting there. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, Christmas. And I've been decorating, getting ready for Christmas. I'm sure you have too. And one of the things that I do when I decorate is I get out my nativity. Now, my nativity is, is breakable, so I have to be really careful. But I have one today that we don't have to worry about. It's kid-friendly. And when I'm talking about nativity, I mean our little figures that represent Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. And, of course, you know, there were animals there, too, as well, because, you know, they didn't get to stay in a hotel. They had to stay in the stable because there wasn't any more room for them in Bethlehem. Now, this is Jesus' family, at least as it, as it started out. And he has mom, dad, and him. And some of your families may look just like that, too. And then some of our other families, they look very different. But one of the cool things about families, you can have a huge family or a small family. And you belong to each other. You know, in our family, my brother is adopted. I don't know if you understand what that is or you know someone who's adopted or maybe you are adopted. But we were so excited for him to join our family as a little baby. But now here's the funny thing. We go to family gatherings and people will say, he looks just like so-and-so <laughs> or he looks just like his dad. And when we were little growing up, we'd spend time with some of my cousins and he looked like all my cousins. And who didn't look like anybody? Yeah, me. So nobody really even remembered that he was adopted. And it doesn't really matter because he belongs to our family forever. And that's a really cool concept that God shares with us in Scripture. That when we decide to follow him, he adopts us as his children. And we are his child forever. So we are God's kids forever when we choose to do that. So I hope you have enjoyed our time together. We will see you next time. Merry Christmas. It was a beautiful piece of music that we heard from our handbells. It just struck me as they played uh, how they are kind of a microcosm of the church at work during COVID. Normally there would be eight people playing two bells each. And instead, there, if you notice, there were four playing four bells each, two in each hand. I'm not sure how they do that, but it was awesome. Our gospel lesson for today, our scripture lesson, is from John's gospel. It's chapter 1. I begin reading at verse 10. He was in the world, and through him the world was made through him. The world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the light, or the right, to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. It was a cold Christmas day, 1864, in the Longfellow house. And the chill was not just because of the winter winds that howled outside, but because the hearts of a father and his children were cold as ice. Francis, their wife and mother, was gone, dead from burns sustained in a fire. To add to their despair, Word had come to the family that the oldest son, Charles, had been badly wounded as a Union soldier fighting in the United States Civil War. And so this family could find no joy, no peace on that Christmas morning as the church bells in the town heralded the day, reminding the hearers of the Savior's birth that Father Henry, a renowned author and poet, began to write. I on Christmas Day.
darkness consumed him. There was hate and conflict all around, in every corner of the nation and in every corner of his soul. trusted many years before. Suddenly, a faint song of hope began to ring in his heart, and the message of peace began to flow from his pen. Advent is the season in which we prepare our hearts and our lives to receive the generous gift of God, of Jesus Christ. And as we worship, this is our moment to express generous worship as we return to God just a small portion of all those blessings he has given us. At each door is a box in which uh, you can leave your gift or you can do that online. Would you pray with me, please? O oh, loving and gracious God, we thank you for your generosity, for your abundance of blessings that you continue to shower upon us. We thank you for the love and grace and God, we thank you especially at this moment for the gift of the vaccine that even now as we gather here to worship you is being loaded and ready to disperse throughout the nation. And God, we pray that people throughout the world would receive this gift of healing. As we gather this day around us, is turmoil and chaos, people struggling with many, many issues. And Lord, we ask that you would draw near with your love and your grace and help us to overcome all that separates us, to see one another as family, as brothers and sisters, 
And as we look upon each other, as we look in each other's eyes, and as we see each other face to face, we would not see ourselves, but you. And may others see you in us. Oh, Lord, may they see you in all that we not only do and speak. Thank you. Thank you for your generous giving. And as we are here, we ask that you would come with your Holy Spirit to empty out our hearts, that our hearts would be like an empty womb that could receive life, that could receive you, that could receive your love, your peace, your hope, your joy. Help us to get rid of all the stuff we think is so necessary but really not needed. Give us the courage to turn and to walk the way that you have laid before us, the way of love, the way of life. Thank you for being here with us and walking alongside of us. Thank you for opening your hands and receiving this our prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. When I went to bed last night, I thought I would be preaching in the same place as usual today. But overnight, my wife was sick, and we were not sure that it was COVID, not sure at all, but out of an abundance of caution, I come to you from our home this morning. Based on our scripture for today, I've got bad news and good news. We've got two verses of bad news and two verses of good news. We'll just take them in the order given. I want to acknowledge the bad news, but focus on the good news. We continue in this Advent journey toward Christmas. We're looking at the opening verses of the Gospel of John, seeking messages that remind us of what Christmas is all about. This writer has already told us in earlier verses that Jesus was with God at the beginning of creation. In these verses, he tells us that when Jesus came into the world that was made through him, that world did not even recognize him. More specifically, it was his own people that would not receive him. In this gospel, the Jews are referred to several times as being those who rejected Jesus. That phrase has been misused and misinterpreted so many times over the last 2,000 years, somehow suggesting that all Jews were against Jesus. But instead, that phrase is referring to the Jewish leadership of that time and place. It was they who rejected Jesus, but so did a lot of other people, both Jew and Gentile. Many Jewish people accepted him. They received him. They believed in him, and they were his first followers and disciples. And by the way, ever since the time of Jesus here on earth, that phrase, his own people, can very well refer to Christians. We are the people of Christ. And it is just as possible for those who claim to be Christian to reject him. For now, I simply remind you that another gospel writer tells us that Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, enters the kingdom. The bad news is that some people do reject Jesus, not only the person of Jesus, but the way of Jesus. They reject the way of love and peace and forgiveness. For instance, rather than breaking down racial barriers, they want to keep them in place. 
I read an article this week about a white supremacist group in Minnesota who dares call themselves a church. Folks, I say that is blasphemy to the name of Jesus Christ. It is an abomination to God. There are people, some Christians, rather than working to save the lost, they would rather, much rather condemn them. Make no mistake about it. There are still people who claim to be his own, but who reject the way he lived and taught. And even more amazing, they believe they're in good standing with God, just as the Jewish religious leaders did back in that day. However, there is also good news, and the good news far outweighs the bad news. Because it's our choice. It's the choice of everybody as to whether they will receive and believe in Jesus Christ. The writer says, to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, born of God. Be assured that that verse can be in the present tense as well. To all who receive him. To those who believe in his name, he gives the right to become children of God, born of God. Well, to be born is to start. It is the point of beginning. In other words, when you believe in Jesus Christ, you can start new anytime. It's like you start being recreated by God. The writer of 2 Corinthians in chapter 5, verse 17, puts it this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. To believe in Jesus Christ, to commit your life to learning and living his way, is to become a new person. And you can do that anytime. You can start new. There are two stories in the Gospel of John. Actually, there are several stories in the Gospel of John who, that uh, tell about that. It's, it's obvious that these really are introductory verses to what's going to be shared in the rest of the book. And certainly that's true for these verses about stories that are in the book. There are several stories. I'm just going to mention two for now. One is about a woman who was brought to Jesus by some of the religious leaders. She'd been caught in a sin for which the Old Testament law said that she should be executed by stoning her. We'll look at that story more later, but for now, I'll just say that Jesus deals with those religious leader and leaders and he sends them on their way. And he says to the woman, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Talk about giving somebody a new start. She got the best Christmas gift you can get. But there's another story in this gospel book that connects even more closely with these good news verses today. It's the story of Nicodemus coming to Jesus. He was one of those Jewish religious leaders, but he was intrigued by Jesus. He knew that there was something different about Jesus. Most importantly, he knew Jesus was from God. Again, we may look at this story more closely later. For today, I'm simply focused on a statement Jesus makes to Nicodemus. He said, no one can enter the kingdom unless they are born again. Another way to translate that Greek word there is born new. When you believe in Jesus and continue to learn and live his way, you get a new start in life. Well, as I thought about this thing of starting new, I wondered if there was a Christmas story about somebody getting a new start. And after a few days of wrestling with that, it was as if God gave me that person, Ebenezer Scrooge, the lead character in Charles Dickens' story, A Christmas Carol. You know, I had no idea that there'd been so many movies made about that character, about, that, uh, about this story. I've watched four of them this past week. I've seen George C. Scott, Kelsey Grammer, and Jim Carrey all playing that leading role. Now, I've been told by a close friend that I still need to watch the Muppets version, and I'll do that. But for now, for me, Albert Finney and the rest of the cast portrayed, portrayed it best way back in 1970, and I want to show you a clip from that in a moment. As a quick reminder, Mr. Scrooge is a miserly, mean-spirited man who's living a lonely life when, this, when his long-dead friend and three ghosts come to visit in the wee hours of Christmas morning 
to try to convince him to change his ways. And after that third ghostly visit, he's wondering if he's lost his opportunity to change. Let's watch. I'm alive! I've got a chance to change, and I will not be the man I was. I'll begin again. I will build my life. I will live to know that I fulfilled my life. I'll begin today. Throw away the past. And the future I build will be something that will last. I will take the time. I have left to live, and I will give it all that I have left to give. I will live my days for my fellow men, and I live in praise of that moment when I was able to begin again. Start anew. I will make amends, and I'll make quite certain that the story ends on a note of hope, on a strong amen, and I thank the world and remember. Here's a man who sees he needs to change his life, and he's overjoyed at the opportunity to do so. He jumps at it, and he jumps for joy as he embarks on this new start. It's like that when we let Jesus show us the way to being born again, of starting new. When I saw Ebenezer jumping for joy, I, I thought about how fitting for us today, since our Advent candle is the candle of joy. And that made me think about two hymns of the church that, are, that have joy in the title. And they're about joy. I've got a question for you. Actually, I've got an answer for you in memory of Alex Trebek and his many years of service to our culture through hosting Jeopardy. I'll put it in the form of an answer, and you have to come up with the question. Here's your clue. This is the last phrase in the Christmas hymn, Joy to the World. If it wasn't for copyright issues, we would have Jeopardy music playing right now. Did you get it? Here's the question. What is and wonders of his love? One of the primary ways we experience this joy of Christ is because of his love. The other hymn about joy I thought of follows along that same line. It was written in the King's English by Henry Van Dyke back in 1907. Here's the third verse of joyful, joyful, we adore thee that describes the God we worship. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine, children of God. Teach us how to love each other, Lift us to the joy divine. There is no doubt in my mind that when we let God teach us how to love each other, we begin to know the joy that only God can give us. So, John says those who receive and believe in Jesus become children of God. When you receive and believe in Jesus, when you are born of God, there are certain assurances God gives you, things you can count on in childlike trust. When I think about children of, at Christmas, I think about this childlike trust. 
Well, I want to leave you with four things you can count on in childlike trust, four things you can know because you are a child of God. First, you are loved. This gospel writer is very clear that love was the core motivation for God, giving us the original and greatest gift ever given, Jesus Christ, his only son. And when Jesus had taught his disciples that they were loved, he could then command them, love one another as I have loved you. He went on to show that love by giving his life so that you and me and everybody else could know and live life at its best. As a child of God, you can be assured that you are loved. Second, you are not condemned. Yes, John 3.16 gives us, tells of us about that love being the motivation that God gave us, Jesus. But the verse right after it goes on to specifically emphasize that Jesus was not sent into the world to condemn it. There may be people in this world who want to condemn you for something you did or said. There are people like that. There are people who are just focused on uh, pointing out the faults of others, condemning others, giving people a hard time. They are not the children of God. God is not about condemning the world, and therefore God is not about condemning you. That same verse says God is about saving the world, so God is about saving you. As a child of God, you can be assured that you are not condemned, no matter what. Third, you have a guide for life. Jesus assured those first disciples that when he left, the same spirit that was in him would be sent to them to comfort and counsel and guide them in all of life. That same Holy Spirit is available to you to guide and lead you in all that you have to deal with in life. Not only that, this is a lifelong covenant with God. So you have a guide for life in the sense of guiding you in life but also guiding you throughout life. This spirit will never leave you or forsake you. As a child of God, you have a guide for life. And finally, as a child of God, you can start again. If you've never received and believed in Jesus, you can do that today or anytime. And when you do, it's like a new start in life. You're, you put your life on a new path, a new road, a way that leads to life at its best and lasts forever. You can get a new start in life. Now, many of you who are listening may have received and believed in Jesus some time ago, in some cases many years ago. But who among us has never taken a trip that we didn't make a wrong turn, that we veered off on a wrong exit? We can do that on our journey of life with Jesus as well. We take an exit or a turn down a side road of life. And it doesn't take long before you're quite a distance off the road. The good news is that you can also turn around, go back toward the way of Christ, take that on-ramp and start again on the right path. As a child of God, you can always start again. You can always go, get back on the right road. Don't ever forget that. How was it Ebenezer Scrooge sang it? I will start anew. I will make amends. And I'll make quite certain that the story ends on a note of hope, on a strong amen. And I'll thank the world and remember when I was able to begin again. We thank God for providing a way for us to begin again, to start new. That way is simply receiving God's gift of Jesus Christ. When you do, you become a child of God. I invite you today to live into the joy of being a child of God, knowing that you are loved, you are not condemned, you have a guide for anything that happens in life, and you can start again, no matter what. The new Ebenezer Scrooge had another line in his song that caught my attention. I will take the time I have left to live, and I will give it all that I have left to give. As a child of God, 
That's the best Christmas gift we can give back to the one who gave us Jesus at Christmas. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for that gift. We thank you that you give us the opportunity. You provided a way for us, a gift that says that if we'll simply receive and believe in Jesus, believe in his way, live his way, learn his way and live his way, that we become your children. And as your children, we can, we can live in a childlike trust of you, knowing that you love us, that you've not condemned us, that you are there to guide us, and that we can start again when we mess up. We can start all over again with you. Guide us in that. Help us to share that, to live that, and help others come to know you with that good news. In Jesus' name, amen.
Would you stand? We're about to be dismissed, if you would. For those of you here in the sanctuary, and for those of you at home, if you're thinking about accepting that opportunity to start again, if that includes accepting Christ as your Savior or joining the church, I'll be happy to have a conversation with you. If you're here in the sanctuary, I'm going to hang around a little bit after the service. If you're at home, just text me. My cell number is 402-0621. I'd love to have that conversation with you. As you go this morning, you're going to notice the offering boxes just as you exit the hallway and enter the atrium. Ushers are going to dismiss you, and you'll go out the way you came in. We'll start with the back rows first, and please remember to keep on your mask and safely distance as you go. Bow with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are present with us in this service of worship. You have blessed us through music and song, through your word. And now as we leave this place, we don't leave you here, but we ask that you come and go with us. Help us indeed to go and be the people of Christ. Amen.